flies by night. Good morning. This morning we welcome Father Aaron Foshi, pastor of Ada and Sulphur. Uh, he's in town. We're going to breakfast. Pray for him. Um, pray for me as we begin this Holy Mass on this beautiful feast day of St. Bernard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare our hearts to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot St. Bernard a man consumed with zeal for your house and a light shining and burning in your church, grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of the light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of Ruth. Once in the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem of Judah departed with his wife and two sons to reside on the plateau of Moab. Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons, who married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malon and Chilion died also, and the woman was left with neither her two sons nor her husband. She then made ready to go back from the plateau of Moab because word reached her there that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, see now, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her God. Go back, go back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not ask me to abandon or forsake you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Thus it was that Naomi returned with the Moabite daughter-in-law, Ruth, who accompanied her back from the plateau of Moab. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. The word of the Lord. The response is from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sights to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul.
So, my God, guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as Father Alex said, my name is Father Aaron Foshi. I uh, am actually a son of this church. I came into the church back at Easter of 2000 right down this aisle with Father Petusky, and so it's a pretty awesome thing to be able to come home. You guys have doubled in size, apparently, though, so it's, it's sort, of, uh, sort of crazy. It's really intimidating, even. I, uh, I'm a pa- the pastor of St. Joseph Church in Ada and St. Francis Xavier Church in Sulphur, and they could fit in this church, so <laughs> the, the buildings could fit in this church, so it's pretty amazing to get to see uh, a vibrant community and uh, gives a lot of hope to, to me as a priest, and I hope it does to you as well. Today, our gospel um, speaks to something that I think oftentimes as Christians, we might often overlook, this idea of love. And uh, on this feast day of St. Bernard, I think it's appropriate. He is known for his writings on the love of God, on on loving God. And so uh, this is an important thing to consider during this day. I would say, though, that we have a problem understanding it. I think most of us can recognize that, especially in, our, in the conversations that we may have or the conversations we refuse not to, to have, <laughs> or, or refuse to have, rather, with people around us because we're afraid in order to, to show our love to people. But we know that the Lord has shown us the importance of love. He says the very first commandment is to love him, to love God above everything. And as Christians, I think that at least superficially, we, we get it, especially those of us here. You guys are here at 7.30 in the morning to receive the Eucharist, to, to worship our Lord, because he deserves it. That is why you're here. And of course, you get something in return, of course, but, but you are here primarily because you know that God deserves your worship and, his, and your love. And so that part, at least as Christians, we sort of get. The second one, though, the second commandment, I think, is oftentimes the one in which we struggle with the most, to love our neighbor as ourself. And I, I, want to, I want to propose, though, that I think it's oftentimes considered in, a, in, in an inappropriate way, not necessarily inappropriate, but not, not really a full understanding of that, because he says to love our neighbor as ourself. And we typically go straight to the idea of, well, we need to love our neighbor. Amen, we do. We need to love our neighbor, but we first have to know how to love them. And we cannot give what we do not have. If we do not understand that first we must come to love who we are so that we can then properly love God and our neighbor, then loving our neighbor will not mean so much. And I think that that's something that we're we're struggling with in our own society today. So brothers and sisters, may we learn to, to pray to love ourselves to love who we are, not simply as, as, you know, Bob or Jan or whoever, but as a child of God. The evil one, one of the, the best, well, one of the, the best successes that he has had in this world is being able to define us by what we do. 
I talk to many people in confession about this idea that we are not human doings, we are human beings. And the reason why this is important to recognize is because if we simply define ourselves by what we do, then we are damnable. We are shameful. And that is exactly what the evil one wants us to consider ourselves to be. He wants to use that shield of our wrongdoings, of our inabilities, of our lack of skill in order to define who we are and thereby tricking us into sh being ashamed of who we truly are, which is children of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. That is your defining characteristic. Do not allow the evil one to trick you into thinking otherwise. So brothers and sisters, may we ask for the intercession of St. Bernard this day in order that we may learn to love truly, to recognize that we love because of love. We love that we may love. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand to offer our petitions. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her with fortitude in her protection of the unborn and the dignity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders throughout the world and for the prosperity and peaceful coexistence of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are, in sh who are shut in or lonely, may the Lord fill them with his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here and for those who are part of our community but unable to be present with us today, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they rejoice forever with God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. In a special way, we lift up in prayer the people of Haiti and of Afghanistan during this time of great struggle and catastrophe, that the Lord in his mercy may give, him, give them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, as well as for the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Loving, merciful Father, we offer you these needs and all the desires of our hearts, confident that you wish to richly pour out your generosity upon us. For we ask them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands. We offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the Abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed, who strove to bring order and concord to your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. We sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Be 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the food we have received, O Lord, as we honor St. Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God of saves. I shall not live in darkness night, nor the arrow that flies by day.